Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for February the 1st. I'm Jonathan Kienzler. Today's scripture reading is found in Exodus chapters 24 through 26 and Matthew chapter 22 verses 23 to 46. The title of my message is Light, Life, and Temple. And we're going to be looking at Exodus chapter 25 verse 37 which says, Then you shall make its lamps seven in number, and they shall mount its lamp so as to shed light on the space in front of it. The lampstand in the holy place was an integral part of the temple and later, or sorry, it was an integral part of the tabernacle and also later in the temple. First and foremost, because without the lampstand, the priests would have ministered in the dark. The description of the lampstand presents a couple of different yet compatible images that have significance for us today. The main function of the lampstand is to light the space in the holy place for service. Um, the lampstand has seven oil lamps that hang on six arms plus the shaft. Um, so just in terms of picturing this, it's like a menorah or um, it's like the menorah um, candle or candelabra, which has uh, one major uh, stem, and then you have six branches that extend from it, giving seven uh, lamps all together from the first one and then each of the, the branches that extend from the stem. The grandeur of this light can easily be missed by today's standards. We have lots of lights. I love to see a house that's well lit up. Um, we like, uh, very often we like a light, like we have lights in the street, we have lights in the, in a city in particular is very well lit up today. Um, but in ancient society, and in particular in the wilderness wanderings, the light of seven lamps would have been far greater than that of any individual family home. Uh, it would have really stood out. People would have looked at the tabernacle at night, for example, and seen the light that was <coughs> coming from these seven lamps. Um, and they would have recognized that as um, being the light of God. God is our, our light. God is with us. It would have reminded them that God is also a consuming fire. Exodus 3 verse 2 says, um, talks about the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bush was not consumed. And so in the same way that these lampstands were to burn continually, they were to never go out. And it was to be a, a symbolic reminder that God is our light and he, his light always is shining. It never is going out. Reminding us, of course, of like Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. In the beginning, God said, let there be light even. And there was. Um, and so that's God even manifests his presence. God lets his will be known. God sheds light in a dark place. He gives hope where there is none. That is our God. And he cannot be consumed. And um, he is able actually to, to act in a way that does not harm us either. He works for our good. We need to, to remember that too. Well, the lampstand shape is also important. So we have the light uh, coming from the lampstand, um, but also the lampstand's shape itself is in the form of a almond tree with buds and flowers and even the fruit of it. Like a tree, it is a single unit cast as one piece without separate parts. We see this especially in Exodus chapter 25 verse 31 and and following, you have, Then you shall make a lampstand of pure gold, the lampstand and its base and its shaft are to be made of hammered work, with its cups, its bulbs, and its flowers shall be of one piece um, with it. And then verse uh, th 33 says, Three cups shall be shaped like almond blossoms in the one branch, a bulb and a flower, and three cups shaped like almond blossoms in the other branch. A bulb and a flower so for six branches going out from the lampstand and of course then you have the the cups um, that were in the the almond bl blossoms um, and that would be where the fire comes from and the light would come come out and it would be like God's fruitfulness even that he provides into our lives is like is is demonstrated and illustrated by the light so you have um, light and fruitfulness and life and and all coming together in God's temple so dwelling in his in his place in his house means that we will dwell with light we will dwell with life and and fruitfulness also so um so 
it would have reminded them even even just as well as the with the the tree of life in the garden of eden and signify that there is life in god's presence um, there as well and so the lampstand's symbolic significance is also found in jesus who is the light he of course says in john 8 verse 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. So while we're with him, you you will have life. You will have light. Um, Those two very much go together. Um, And Jesus, of course, also describes his disciples as the light. Um, So in John, while Jesus is in the world. He is the light of the world. But Matthew prepares us for his his leaving. And he says in Matthew chapter 5, verse um, 14, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. And so just noting that we're intended to shine. We're to let our light shine. Now, who, who or what is our light? Well, it's Jesus. We're to let the gospel forth. We're to tell others. In everything that we do, we're to be a light. Everything that we do and say, we're to represent Jesus. We're kind of like the reflected light of the sun that the moon gives off. We're kind of like the moon's light. Jesus, of course, being even the sun. So the significance of the lampstand is continued also in Revelation chapters one or chapter one um, verses twelve to thirteen. There we see. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And it's that similar image that we see in in the tabernacle. Um, and uh, these are also shown, of course, to be the churches. Uh, In verse 20, it says, As for the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So we see that the lampstands are even a manifestation or a symbolic use of God's people. We are to hold even and bear God's presence. Um, And we see that the Holy Spirit is the light or the fire of the lampstands. Um, We see this, uh, for example, in Revelation 4, 5. Out from the throne come flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And that's a way, actually, of speaking of the sevenfold spirit of God, the fullness of God's spirit. There's no other spirit like him. There's nothing missing. The spirit of God is complete and full, and it it stands for even the presence of God. Um, of God. And it's that light coupled the seven spirits of God or the sevenfold spirit of God coupled together with the seven lampstands. One people full in fullness have the fullness of God's presence in and with them uh, producing his light even. So just know that the church holds even and gives forth the light of God even as we are as Jesus said, the light of the world, Um, we do so through the power of the Holy Spirit. And of course, the Spirit empowers us to be his witnesses. Just reminding you at Pentecost in Acts 2 verse 3, there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And that is like, they were like candles or like a a lamp. On that day, the the light of of the Holy Spirit shone above their heads. It's really quite an awesome, the image is is actually really amazing. So echoing the tree-like similarity of the lampstand, Jesus describes himself and those with him similarly. I am the vine and you are the branches. And Jesus is the tree of life. And we have eternal life if we partake um, of him. So Jesus is the light of the world, the tree of life, and also God's temple. And in, in him we have access to God's presence, his life, and light. And as his people, we are privileged to show forth his light to the world. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, uh, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Are you effective in ministering to others because you are in Christ, your source of life and light and do you take the gospel to others so that they may know that they can come out of darkness they don't have to stay there but the light even is calling them out let's pray heavenly father i thank you for 
uh, Lord, you're, the incredible imagery that we have of how we're to see ourselves, how we're to see you. You are light. You are life. Uh, and you don't want us to live in darkness anymore. And you call us even to be children of light. How awesome your word is. Uh, what a comfort it is. Uh, and Lord, it really does help us to see how we are supposed to see ourselves in the world. And we thank you, Lord, for the great privilege we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.